Fear stops us from achieving our true greatness. Are you a professional woman who is feeling stuck, unmotivated, or burned out? Are you worried about your wellness? Are you letting fear stop you from crushing your goals? If you answered yes to any or all of these, then this is the podcast for you. Dr. Charmaine Gregory, night shift emergency physician, burnout thriver, and wellness champion, along with everyday heroes just like you, will explore how to face fear in our lives and emerge victoriously. Dr. Gregory here. Did you know that I'm on YouTube as well? You can find me at Charmaine Gregory MD. See you there. Here. Hello, 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 Fearless Freedom Tribe. Welcome to another amazing week in your life where you are facing fear and emerging victoriously. Today on the show, we have Dr. Allison Horsmeyer, and she is going to tell you all about herself and what she is up to. Take it away. Hi, it's so great to be here. Yeah, I I am a leadership development consultant and executive coach and a researcher, and I study curiosity. And uh, it brings up a lot of uh, great discussion for us in terms of how we can harness our curiosity. And really, the stress tolerance dimension of curiosity is about managing our, our stress and anxiety and doubt where we're navigating uh, the ambiguous and complex and uncertain. And uh, in that way, it actually gives us the data points to build our resilience so then we can be fearless going forward. Awesome. 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 And so you have to, I mean, that is very specific, I will tell you. And so what we are always, this is going towards your, 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 um, your niche. We're curious about how you came to this zone of genius. Like, how did you get there? Yeah, thank you. Uh, So I started my career building businesses at the intersection of tech and media. I was a business business development executive and typically with global purview, uh, typically I was brought in to launch uh, new technology into new markets, strike new partnerships or turn partnerships around. And I really enjoyed uh, pioneering and building. That was always a great space for me because I I like the more unprescriptive paths. And during that time, you know, I worked with international sales teams and engineering teams and noticed anxiety and complacency around me. I also noticed a lot of different leadership styles. And I, I, wa- I wanted to do something about it. I wanted to come back to the corporate sector in a more service orientation. Um, and I wanted to really dive into the connection between the mind and the body, social science, behavioral science, and to see what, to see what I could, could figure out in terms of how I could help people with anxiety. And that led me into uh, curiosity because I naively suggested that, you know, can you be curious and anxious all at the same time. I thought maybe I had something I, I totally didn't. And at the same time, it led me in, down this remarkable um, journey into the richness of curiosity, the multidimensionality of curiosity, how we have p- typically conceived curiosity with in connection to creativity and innovation, but not so much our interpersonal skills and all on our self-awareness. And it brought me actually back to anxiety, but just in a different way in terms of that stress tolerance dimension. And through my research and and my study participants and the work that I do, I see very much that engaging and normalizing experimentation exploration actually is a way for us to manage our our anxiety and for us to learn and grow and evolve. Um, It's when we get stuck in our rigid points of view of how we think something should be or has to be, or we're conformed in in a certain way that we fundamentally know that is not aligned with us or who we are. Uh, We can use our curiosities to start gaining self-awareness about ourselves and about how we interact with each other and, and the world. And so that is what I've been infusing into my work when I work with uh, companies. Awesome. 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 So companies that are, I'm curious, again, I'm using your word, 
<laughs> but I'm curious if, um, you know, if there's a difference in the different kinds of companies that you're working with, because, you know, when I think of like freedom, maybe this is freedom of curiosity, um, the company that comes to mind, like the first would be, well, the first tech company that would come to mind, it would be Google, right? Mm -hmm. Because they like, they basically have a fostered environment of curiosity. They have, you know, playrooms and creative, creative dump rooms and all these things built into their, their workspaces. And so, you know, I said, that's the first one that comes to mind from the tech side. And then from like, um, uh, uh, I guess, I don't know, entertainment sector, maybe like uh, toy companies, right? Mm -hmm. Like in toy companies, you have to be able to think like a child, think about how, you know, so the child has limitless possibilities, limitless, um, there, there are no boundaries to the curiosity of a child. And so I would imagine, I don't know, I never worked at a toy company, but like, I mean, I would imagine <laughs> that at a toy company, there would be this, like, um, this freedom to think outside the box to create so that you can create and that will foster your creative juices. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I think about, so this is like, so Google and then a toy company, but then, then I think about like, what about a place where maybe creative thinking is not like not innate to the culture. Right. So like a, an accounting firm, there we go. People don't really like creative accountants, right? Because that usually leads to the IRS getting involved. So, you know, would would this would this principle or would this um this uh this line of thinking would it also apply in a place like that? Is it like yeah. something that can apply across the board or is it specific to certain industries? <laughs> Mm -hmm. So we know that curiosity is innate in each one of us and depending what's happened to our life experiences and our work and other things, it, it will manifest in, in different ways and may even be stifled to a certain extent. So um, how, how you're curious can be informed by certain past experiences, your values, how you perceive yourself in the world, and so on. What, what seems to be universal across many companies, especially as we were at the confluence of a pandemic, uh, social injustice and other factors is a need for mental, emotional and social flexibility, adaptability, agility, really agility. And even in the most constrained environments, there was a recognition that there's a need for execs and teams to be more agile, to be open to uh, open to the incoming data that may contradict what they believe and what they think is going on. And that even in the most constrained environments, uh, there is an opportunity to rethink, reimagine, relearn, and reflect. And a lot about curiosity is reflection. Like, you know, we get so caught up in doing, we're not really taking the time to review what's working well and what's not. We're just going to what we know, which is a lot about um, either confirmation bias or status quo bias. And then we wonder why we're not evolving as a team, as an organization, as a business unit, that we're not keeping ahead of what's possible. I think um, it depends, it, it does depend on the organization, depends on the, the leader, what the leader is modeling. It's the leader modeling. You have to be perfect and have all the ideas perfectly buttoned up. There's not going to be a whole lot of experimentation and curiosity in that scenario. Are we modeling, you know, come with a half-baked idea and let's iterate on it because we know in the research that having meaningful debate and dissension and, you know, respectful, that we actually get better ideas that way and idea linking. Um, so what's the psychologically safe environment that we're creating? And so if so, I think that it's fundamentally starting to seep into a number of different industries because the environment is changing too much. We call it a VUCA environment, volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. Mm -hmm. And what worked a month ago, I'm not saying that, you know, regulation changes that much. So in highly regulated industries, maybe some things are a little bit more stable in terms of uh, certain regulation and, and 
laws that you have to follow, but certainly how you interact with each other, how you show up on a daily basis, how you are able to uh, be innovative in constraints are all really valuable and all matter. And curiosity can be a doorway to each of those things. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for putting it in that perspective. Because like I said, you know, in my mind, when you said that, I was like, oh, wait, okay, Google contrast with the accounting (laughs) firm. Like, how does that work? But that makes sense. That makes total sense. Okay. And then so, you know, tell us about your personal journey, because we always want to hear how, you know, how you face fear in your in your life. Yeah, well, certainly making a a career transition is always uh, fraught with doubt and uncertainty. Um, I think what really helped me is I got clear on how I wanted to make an impact going forward, essentially purpose. We know in the research purpose is such an important driver in terms of focus, energy, engagement. Um, and it can be such an um, such a potent tool um, because it's your touchstone, it's your compass, and it can really help you navigate through the tougher times and also help you reframe experiences to what can I learn out of this and apply going forward, it's keeping my purpose and my vision for what I want to unfold in mind. And so there were, you know, going... Um, Going through a PhD process is quite transformative. (laughs) Um, And, you know, (laughs) that's an understatement, right? (laughs) And and working at the same time, like, you know, I was working full time and doing that. And knowing that I was leaving a current iteration of myself to move into a newer iteration of myself. And I didn't really know you know, how that was going to unfold. I just knew that I wanted to be a service to people. I wanted to be a, like really understand the research and be able to facilitate and coach in a way that could bring that forward and could bring also my business experience forward. I wasn't sure how that was going to be all amalgamated and, and actually manifest, but I knew that I had to get the training and also take opportunities that, that maybe didn't pay or that, you know, were just um, a way for me to practice being in front of people. So looking for opportunities where I could experiment safely and starting to get more confidence in those areas Um, and, and not so concerned about, um, the financial impact right away, which is also scary because you're watching uh, your income flow be quite different <laughs> as you're making transitions of like, oh, I kind of missed the stock. Where did that go? You know, uh-huh. um, did I really want to give up my stock and, and try, you know, go to this like entrepreneurial endeavor? And, uh, and so, yeah, you have, there are certain things you give up along the way, uh, knowing that it's temporary. I think that's the other thing that helped me. It's like, you know, it, this, if I'm going to grow um, and evolve and practice new things and things that I have to let go of that maybe I, I was used to, you know, that's temporary. It'll come back. And the things that I let go of that no longer serve me, that was, that was incredibly liberating at the same time. Like I could really own my choices and my, my decisions. And I, I had only myself, to, um, I don't want to even say blame when something didn't go wrong, but it was on me. It was on me for the choices that I made. So um, that is incredibly empowering versus, you know, being told or uh, directed by somebody else's expectations. I think that sometimes what the fear comes from a, a picture we've created in our heads based on past experiences or something we've been told. And I would say the more I connected and networked with people and collected information and did my own due diligence, then I can make the informed decisions uh, myself. And sure enough, the picture that I was holding of what I thought or somebody was expecting me to be uh, morphed into what was true. So often our illusions, our illusions can be so strong 
they really can't those that inner critic delusions that we're creating of how we expect something to be. And so I I'll, I would invite that having a purpose and a sense of where you want it to go, you can be pretty prescriptive about there about that. But how you get there and how that journey unfolds, if you hold on to how you think it's supposed to be going that's when your anxiety is going to go up because it's not matching. If you can learn how to follow the thread of where it's taking you and, and kind of hold a open fascination about that, then uh, it's amazing what comes forward. And the more people you tell about what you're looking for, what like you're looking to do, um, you will see that there are people willing to support you and open doors for you. And, um, and then of course, be incredibly grateful and thankful for those uh, people because uh, you, you can't do it by yourself. Wow. There's like so much that you just said. And I was like completely resonated with me. And I know for sure resonates with the audience because there are definitely people listening to this right now who are at the, uh, crossroads, turning point, fork in the road. I don't know what you want to call it, but like they are in a position perhaps where they have to make a choice whether they're going to pursue entrepreneurship or continue to work for somebody else. And there mm -hmm. is a lot of uncertainty surrounding that. And you mentioned that, you know, you like, you had a vision of where you were going. You knew you visualized that thing, but then you also kind of had that little gnawing, you know, um, perched individual on your shoulder saying, Hey man, like your stocks, like, don't forget about those guys. And so, um, you know, a lot of people, when they make the decision to go out on their own, that is the biggest fear, right? Because they're like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to have health insurance. Oh my gosh, I'm not going to have a 401k, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And so not realizing that, you know, when you do your own thing, actually you stepping into your zone of genius is going to really help you to help more people, number one. And when you help more people, guess what happens? You don't have to worry about money. You have to worry about that stuff because it will come. And it is that uh, is that journey that is difficult for most people because we have been trained and this was on purpose, right? Because back in the day when it was an industrial revolution, what did they want to do? They put you in school so that you'd learn how to follow directions, work from a certain time period, go to lunch at a certain time period and be able to be productive the entire day, not to think outside the box and not to like want to do your own thing and not to want to create your own path and make your own impact. So it is a lot of programming that needs to be readjusted uh, to fit the entrepreneurial mentality that you need yeah. in order to be successful. So, you know, as you're saying all those things, I was like, wow, that's so real. That's like, Yes, I, I remember that. Yes, that's that's perfect. Like, yes, I, I know when my friend was going through that, like I could totally see all of those elements as you were speaking it. I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's definitely that's universal, apparently, because that's something that we all experience. <laughs> so, no, that was great. That was great. Hey, it's Dr. G, and I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank you for listening to this episode. I'm so honored to have you here with me. Did you know that I can help you to get your own podcast started? With my podcasting launch course for professionals, I walk you through everything you need to know about starting a podcast. I'm with you every step of the way from sign up to launching your show with five episodes ready to go. There's a done for you version that's also available. If you would just rather just do recordings and leave the behind the scenes work up to us, then that one is definitely for you. But either way, we've got your back here at Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Oh, if you already have a show and you need production services, we have monthly plans available for you. So check out the links in the episode show notes for more information. Let's get back to the show.
And so you have to let us know how can, if somebody wants to work with you, how can they get in contact with you? And it's very important that you spell it out just in case somebody doesn't have the show notes handy. Sure. My website is www, three W's as always, uh, drallisonh.com. So D-R-A-L-I-S-O-N-H dot com. There's a form you can uh, fill out and send to me. It takes two seconds. I love hearing from people. I love learning about people. Uh, there's also articles and other uh, things on my website if, if you're interested in uh, diving into the world of curiosity um and uh yeah i would love to hear from folks awesome 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 thank you and so if you were to give somebody so you you told us how you faced your fears you're making the transition because yes you're I mean, I didn't go through a PhD. I got an MD, but my husband got a PhD and um, yeah, it was quite the journey. Uh, and then, and then for you to do it while working is a very admirable. It's like, you know, that's like, you know, we're here and now you're like up here because uh, it's, it's, that's huge. It's, that's absolutely huge. And so, you know, you have some pearls. I know it. So one of the pearls that you, you dropped already was that you utilize visualization. So you saw yourself where you want to be. And then the other thing that you said was you want to, you expressed to individuals around you what you were going to be doing. And so that facilitated the support network that you needed, right? So people were yeah. like, oh yeah, that's a H is doing X, Y, and Z. You know, this other person over here does that. Maybe she talked to them like that kind of deal. I'm sure yes. was what was happening. Um, so, yes. you know, so it's important to visualize. I'm, I'm just paraphrasing from what you said. It's important to visualize. And then it's important to speak your truth so people can know what you're doing so they can know how they mm-hmm. can help you. Um, mm-hmm. Are there other pearls that you would suggest to the, to the uh, tribe if they're looking to face a fear like that? right? A career change or even start a business or starting a new path or moving somewhere or whatever it is. Like, is there another pearl that you would also suggest for them? Yeah. Uh, talk to people who have been doing it. See what, what you can glean from there. I, I talk to other coaches and to get an understanding of, you know, what their path was like, how long things took, uh, where, you know, whatever pearls of wisdom they had for me. So I didn't re- repeat their mistakes. Uh, networking is key. Uh, n- and nothing beats a phone call, a Zoom, uh, like just emailing or doing social media. It's not going to build relationships. Uh, building relationships is still the foundation pretty much everything. Uh, and I learned that really early on in my business development career and it still holds true today, even in our very digital world. And, you know, also you can do it in, in um, bite size uh, ways. Like, you know, you don't have to, if you're not comfortable leaving your job to explore entrepreneurship, then maybe there's something in between. Maybe there's an entrepreneurial opportunity at your company, like there's a new product or a new business being contemplated, or um, maybe there's an opportunity for you to mentor and coach if you're interested in getting coaching. And, you know, try things out before you kind of go full head in an experiment, which is why I did school as I was working because it gave me an opportunity to try things out and say, no, that's definitely not for me. Yeah, that sounds like something that's really resonating. Um, So allow yourself to experiment. You know, you have to do your homework essentially and, um, and give yourself time to have the experiences so you can start uh, putting the pieces together in the way that supports you. Um, and, and so I guess I would say, you know, be careful the the big swings out the gate um, and, you know, go, go at your pace, go where, you know, we want you to stretch, but not so much that you feel like, you know, you're drowning. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know? um, and yeah, use your support group, take breaks too. Like, I don't know, even if you found to like having the separation of taking a break, like there will always be enough time. I think we get very hung up on we're running out of time. We're not doing it fast enough. I know I had those fears and, you know, 
uh, I had to slow it down and I had to take breaks because I was getting exhausted. So we, we have to be kind, be kind to yourself in the process, really. That is great. Thank you so much. No, absolutely. Like all the things is, yeah. And I, I would have to say that um, I'm glad that you said take breaks and, and that there is time because I think that that right there is the biggest thing. Cause I know even for my life, like I was like, Oh, you know, I look back at, you know, the 12 years or whatever it is that I spent at school and I'm mm-hmm. like, Oh, you know, um, if I had known that it was going to be that much time, I don't know if I would have done it still. Maybe I would have, mm-hmm. I don't know, but not knowing and just saying, and just like having a, um, having a benchmark for each stage, like, okay, done with college now. All right. Next step is med school. Okay. Done with med school. Now next step is residency. Okay. Done a residency. Now next, now I can get a job. Like, so, but if I said, if I told myself, you know, at the very beginning, you're not going to be, you're going to still, you're going to be about 30 years old before you actually start your real job. Like, I don't know as a teenager, if I truly would have been like, oh yeah, this is what, this is what I'm going to do still. But if you have the, it's almost like when you're trying to get to a big goal, you know how you, you reverse engineer it. And so like you go back and you say, okay, well, like you mentioned, you said bite-sized bits, right? So you want bite-sized bits that are attainable. Those things are time bound, but, you know, not like super constrained that, you know, if you don't make it by this deadline and, you know, it's over, forget it or failure kind of deal. But, you know, having bite-sized bits and so that you can celebrate those wins along the yes, way. Yes, yeah. Because otherwise, forget it. Like, you're going you're gonna to freak out. Like, you're going to mm-hmm. not do it. You're going to get discouraged and you're not going to do it. And so you have to have those wins along the way to celebrate. And like you said, you have to be able to say, you know what? I can take a break. Like, I took a year off to just do research at the NIH during rent medical school. Like, I could have been like, no, 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 I need to finish in the four years. But I said, you know what? I think this would be a good experience. I'm just going to go check it out and see if bench to bedside research is for me. And I'm so glad I did that because I realized that bench to bedside research was not for me, but it was a phenomenal experience being at the NIH, the place where, you know, all the funding comes from for everybody else's yes. lab. And being think in of the space, network, you just created. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's, it was absolutely amazing. And it was like, it was like being in a candy store, even though I wasn't like, wasn't going to be a physician scientist, I still enjoyed being in that environment. And so I think that when we allow ourselves, like you said, to be able to take breaks, that is when we start to see the things that maybe, you know, is going to determine the path directly, Mm -hmm. or maybe it's going to tell you that that's not the path. Right. And so I love it that you said that you continued working so that you would have that freedom to be able to sift through the experiences and figure out which ones are going to be the ones that are going Mm -hmm. to be the determining path. That's, that's so powerful. So thank you for sharing your story. It was absolutely absolutely amazing. Yeah. And I know that um, there are definitely ears that are perked up from our conversation who will be getting in contact with you. So looking forward to that. And, you know, this has been such a great conversation, Dr. H. And um, (laughs) I definitely want to, um, I definitely want us to do our tradition. So I just want to ask you one question. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you ready to fill the blanks? Okay. All right. Awesome. Awesome. (laughs) Awesome. All right. So the first one is, if I am fearless, I will. If I am fearless, I will always experiment. Awesome. Awesome. The next one is to me, fearless freedom means. Fearless freedom to me means always growing. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And then the third question is my battle cry is. Be authentic. Awesome. (laughs) All right. So thank you so much for your time, for sharing your zone of genius with us. We do appreciate it. And, you know, we love that you gave us some good pearls for facing fear, because that is what we are always looking for, you know, more tools for the toolbox to apply to life, which is what it's all about. Right. And Mm -hmm. definitely let the tribe know once again, how they can get in contact with you. 
All right, the website is drallisonh.com, D-R-A-L-I-S-O-N-H.com. Awesome, 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 awesome. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Awesome to be here with you. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Again, I'm Dr. G. And if you like this episode, be sure to subscribe so that you can get notified of when the next episode is going to be. And also, I'll catch you next time. Have a great one. Be strong, be brave, and unleash your greatness.